spoken out of Shan Wu, former federal prosecutor who was counsel to then Attorney General Janet Reno, and Evan Perez, our senior justice correspondent. So, Shan, let's just start with this, you know, for the former president. The D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals, you know, rejecting his claims of executive privilege. They are, though, giving him two uh, weeks to appeal to the Supreme Court, which, of course, he's going to do. How much longer can he drag this out? Well, I think if the Supreme Court does take it, and it's not 100 percent certain they will, uh, they would probably take it on an expedited track. And, uh, you know, I can't really venture to guess, but they're certainly going to want to stay away from the midterms. Uh, so I think you'd see something long before the Steve Bannon case goes to trial. <laughs> and that, of course, is July 18th. Um, so, you know, <laughs> that's a long time away. Right. Evan, let me read uh, from part of today's ruling. It says that Trump failed to offer a, a reasonable argument to back up his position on claiming executive privilege and says, quote, he offers instead only a grab bag of objections that simply assert without elaboration his superior assessment of executive branch interests, right? Superior as opposed to the current occupant um, of the White House who controls uh, the executive branch. So, you know, does this impact other assertions of privilege, Evan, is a crucial question, right? Because you've got uh, Mark Meadows claiming it, Steve Bannon. Their cases may be obviously in the specifics different, but all of them are going to rest upon executive privilege. Yeah, no, it does. And and I think that's a great point, uh, a great question and a great point you're raising because uh, if you read this opinion, it, it almost, it seems like it's written specifically by these judges uh, knowing that there are other courts with some of these questions that are pending. There are obviously this new lawsuit from, from Mark Meadows, but there are other, other ways of people around the Trump circle who are trying to fight off this, uh, this committee and what this committee is trying to do. And what the judges seem to be calling uh, the former president and his legal team out on is this Trumpian tactic, which is to, to insult to really just assert things without having to prove it, right? Yeah. And they say, as you, as you just read there, uh, you know, one of the things that he was doing was impugning the, the, the president, the current president, and the House without really making any arguments. And he had plenty of arguments to make. He just chose not to make them. So, Shannon, is there any sort of a, a, a precedent here that they're trying to provide that could apply, let's say specifically in the case of, of Mark Meadows, whose testimony is going to be crucial and obviously was working for the former president as the chief of staff, you know, when Trump was in office and did have, in that sense, some claim to executive privilege. Oh, absolutely, Aaron. I think that they are setting out, um, as Evan pointed out, yeah. kind of like a roadmap for other courts to look at, obviously, including the Supreme Court. I mean, they're really saying to Donald Trump here, you know, it's not that you didn't get a chance to be heard on executive privilege. You just had nothing of value to say to us. And it's either ironic, rather ironic, because Trump likes to fashion himself as almost a fourth branch of government. And the court quite clearly points out that here, the executive branch and the legislative branch are allied against his position. And now the third branch, the only three real branches we have, judiciary has weighed in against him, too. I mean, you know, look, let's just be honest, as you say, a fourth branch, right? He's got his own, you know, sort of adjunct ambassadors uh, out there. I mean, it is, it, you know, one, one could laugh or be deeply concerned. But Evan, another significant line from the ruling I wanted to read to you because there's something that really <laughs> I want to ask you. It says the committee is investigating a singular event in this nation's history in which there is a sufficient factual predicate for inferring that former President Trump and his advisors played a materially relevant role. Evan, I highlight that sentence because that sentence is not about executive privilege. That right. sentence, to me, seems to take it a step quite a bit further. They're saying there's sufficient factual predicate to infor, infer that President Trump played right. a role in January 6th. That, that, that's a different matter. It, it really is. And, you know, that uh, line seems to be in response to this is another self-created problem for the former president because he part of his argument his legal argument here was that really you know this committee is out to get me essentially they're trying to put me on trial um, and so the, the these judges are saying well I mean you're, you're just saying that without it without without really mm. providing any any example but um, so since you since you've raised that um, this committee is actually looking to see whether there is something to be done about what happened in January 6th. And, and as you pointed out, they raised this idea that, you know, the president and his advisors have something to answer to clearly from the public information that's already been out there and from whatever information this committee is trying to get from these documents that Trump is trying to hide uh, at this point. So, Shan, let me ask you also about Mark Meadows, right, who 
um, they're going to hold formal vote of contempt, right? So then that goes through courts, just like Steve Bannon is. So Steve Bannon, I believe it's July 18th that he's going to get a day in court, uh, which, which may mean the, the committee never gets to hear from Steve Bannon, right, if, if control switches to Republicans. So, Shim, what does that timeline mean for Mark Meadows? I mean, is there any way that Mark Meadows gets a day in court before July 18th? I don't think so. I don't think it'll take the department as long because they've kind of been through the legal analysis. He has a slightly better claim since he actually worked yeah. uh, in government then, but I doubt it's going to get there any faster than Bannon will. Wow, wow. And of course, I, I should note, he's claiming executive privilege in part um, about documents he's already provided that he right, didn't claim right. privilege on, yeah. so that doesn't right. make any sense. Yeah. All right, thank you both very much. I appreciate your time, as always. Thank you. Good to see you. And next, David Perdue. The